Welcome to the Jesus People segment of the Antioch Indie Podcast, a place where each week we're going to hear from different people about what it means to walk with God. We hope that you leave encouraged and equipped and that this builds your faith for what God wants to do in your life. <laughs> Welcome to the Jesus People segment of the Antioch Indie Podcast. I have very special guests on today who were requested by many. I just finished telling them. But I have Brad and Kathy Huff on. And I imagine that there are a lot of new people who are like, Brad and Kathy Huff, I'm not familiar with their names. But I feel like you guys are. Um, I felt this morning when I was talking to the Lord about this podcast specifically, he gave me the word linchpin, which is not a word that I normally think of. And I looked up what it is and it's a part of a wheel. It's like a pin that you put in a wheel that holds it in place. And I feel like you guys are linchpins in the kingdom. Like whatever you do, the Lord uses you, like you fasten things in, in the right place and you give structure and not only that, but momentum to different things. So I'm excited to have you guys on today to talk to everybody. Well, we're happy to be here. <laughs> yes, and I, thank I, I, you. Yeah, thanks for that word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brad and Kathy live very busy lives. You guys both work full time. And so it's an honor to have you pause in the middle of a Wednesday and come to record with me. It's so great. Kathy, why don't you tell us? You were just telling me what you do, but why don't you tell everybody? Okay. So I am a consultant. I'm, I'm independent at this point. I'm a consultant and also a lobbyist in the healthcare technology arena. I've been doing that for, for many years. i mm-hmm. um, kind of always been in public policy and politics and mm-hmm. been tr- transitioning a little bit more recently towards um, doing a lot more work in the fight against human trafficking. And so I'm on a, a board of an organization called You Can Free Us. And wow. um, it, you know several of the board members are based here in the United States and some are international, but it is kind of more of an international ministry and in, in where they're located. That is crazy. Okay, I'm going to come back to that. Brad, what do you do? So uh, day-to-day, I run a company called Mr. Quick Home Services. Mm -hmm. Um, We're a residential home service company. We do Mm -hmm. heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical work. Mm -hmm. I think you gave us something when Cade was first diagnosed, like so generously for our house that cleaned all of our air. Yes. And the other day, I almost burned our house down with a cast iron pan. Have you ever done this? I was trying to season it, left the oil on, left the room, talking to my sister in the other room, and Haven comes in and is like, Mom, the whole house smells. Came in, our house was almost on fire. But thanks to your system, the next day, the smell was completely gone. (laughs) That's awesome. I was like, Brad up for the win there, guys. Um, That's awesome. Um, Okay, so you guys have been coming to Antioch for how long? Since the beginning. I mean, we we were at the first uh, Friday evening meeting at the Zanacos house, and uh, we've been been here ever since. What, when you came to that Friday evening meeting, what were your, do you remember some of your takeaway thoughts? Honestly, I just remember at at that point, um, you know, we'd kind of already made the decision to to go be a part of a, a church plant, but I just remember the ride over there. Brad just saying, hey, I just want you to know I've really prayed on this and I need to do this and this is really important to me. And so I just said, okay, I'm along for the ride. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sweet wife. Yes. So great. Very, very much so. Yes. That's so awesome. So since the beginning, what was like the journey before before this church? When did y'all come to know the Lord? What was that process like? You want to start, Brad, and just tell yeah. us a little so, bit of your history. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I, I came to faith later in life. I was about 24 years old, living, um, I would call it an agnostic life, mm-hmm. more of a, I just didn't care. Yeah. And at 24 years old, my best friend died in a car accident. Wow. And so that, you know, at 24, you're invincible. Right. And so that kind of woke me up and I started down this journey. Yeah. Hey, what is, I think the main question I ask is, what is the truth about? what's going to happen when my ticker stops ticking. And uh, so I went down many paths, read many different books, different worldviews, and ultimately came came to the cross. I yeah. came to Christ and, and found the truth there. And, and it was a long journey, though. It was yeah, I was going to say, how did that, like you're looking at all these different things, do you have a moment that culminated in leading you to Jesus? I don't I don't think there's a moment. Okay. It, I still just don't have, the, a lot of people have the date, you know. I don't. I just have this time span of... Um, very early on, you know, I read other worldviews and I think pretty quickly dismissed some of them. Mm-hmm. Um, Christianity was the one that stuck out. And C.S. Lewis's books really rocked me. He really helped me along. Lee Strobel's books, The Case for Christ. Yes. And then, uh, Robbie Zacharias was a huge influence. So um, I, I was very early in the podcasting days. So I would download all of Robbie's podcasts. And I mean, I listened to those things hundreds of times. Wow. And just the arguments he presented. The He is not easy to listen to. 
I feel like it's like a lot of heady. I mean, you got to think. You're probably real smart, right? No, no, okay. no, no, no. I was, you know, I always tell people I was in that part of the class that makes the top half possible. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, wasn't the brightest, brightest student. Yeah. Horrible student, actually. And, um, you know, I fell out of college after a semester and hated school, hated learning. Oh, my gosh. But once, once, once this path kind of, once I started down this path, I became an avid reader, just an avid learner. Yeah. And so podcasts were easier than reason, reading. Yes. So, no, I got really, really involved in those and really hooked to them early on. That is amazing. Okay. Kathy, what about you? So I, I was raised in the Catholic faith. Okay. Um, very, very strongly. And I I felt very strong about my faith, mm-hmm. especially growing up. Um, I even thought about becoming a nun. Wow. I, uh <laughs> I, you know, would go to church by myself in my high school years because I wanted to make sure I was choosing it. Um, And then college came and the years after in my 20s Mm -hmm. and I just drifted away. Mm -hmm. Um, I drifted away. I don't think I recognize how far I drifted away um, till, you know, my mid 20s when it was it it almost felt even uncomfortable to kind of go into a church. Wow. Um, I kind of just didn't even feel deserving about walking into a church. And, you know, flash forward several years later, I started really just kind of making up my mind in terms of what I wanted to do in life and if I wanted to get married. And, you know, next thing I know, I I met Brad um, at a party that I had when I moved back to Indianapolis just to kind of reconnect with friends. And one of my friends invited Brad there and we met. Um, And within a week i thought well let's let's you know hang out maybe just be buddies or whatnot yeah and so um he he was the one i well i mentioned maybe like going to church together because i thought well if you're going to start off something really unique yeah maybe you throw some throw the lord in there and say, yeah, 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 yeah like let's go to church considering and i'm going <laughs> I, I that obviously i look back and i go that was definitely the lord because yes. first of all i wasn't going to church it's so crazy. why in the world would I ask this guy to go to church? Yeah, just to see. <laughs> and then when he had me go to church with him, I think in my head I was thinking, oh, this is probably some like Catholic or Lutheran kind of mm-hmm. typical church. And he took me to a non-denominational Christian church. Had you ever been in something like no, that? No, it was wow. highly uncomfortable. Yeah, it's very different. <laughs> very different. Highly uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> And it really did make me question, what am I getting into? Yes. Um, but we just continued. So in a way, I think it was the fact that Brad, Brad brought into my life Ravi Zacharias, mm-hmm. and Zig Ziglar, C.S. Lewis. Mm-hmm. Um, his book, The Great Divorce, I think really, really changed my mindset. I love on that book. Heaven mm-hmm. and how to live here on earth. And I think just listening to all those podcasts with Brad in his car and um, it just was kind of that beginning of the journey for me to not only come back to Christ, but have a very different relationship, Mm -hmm. Um, a very alive and active one where I could directly hear from him Mm -hmm. um, and speak with him and speak over others. And so it was, um, I think like Brad, we don't, neither one of us has this like date. Yeah. Um, it was definitely a, a long journey that I look at and I go, I know I'm still on. It's yeah, still, I still right. have a ways to go. Yes, <laughs> me too. No, I like that there's not a date because I feel like sometimes, I don't know, I can just get hung up on like, oh, this is when someone got saved and now they're fine. But really it's the lifelong journey, right, of like mm-hmm. learning the Lord. And we're always changing our seasons. The things around us are always changing. So if we're committed to the journey with the Lord, you know, yeah. I don't know, it just gives it more longevity. Yeah, that is so cool. I'm reading a book right now called Mystics and Miracles about Catholic saints, but I've been really loving it. And there are a lot of them that went into nunneries at really young ages and just like dedicated their lives. I think it's so cool. The Lord honored, I don't know, that your heart would desire that. And you just knew you were a person of peace. Yeah. And I think I always wanted that really close relationship. I look back at that and I go, why else would I have wanted to have been a nun because mm-hmm. their whole life is just around having that close relationship mm-hmm. with with God and yeah. not somebody else. Yeah. And so I, I think now it's, um, you know, I always tell Brad, I'm like, if I didn't meet him and marry him, I wasn't, I wouldn't get married. Yeah. You know, I, so I would have been fine on my own. Yeah. Um, 
Brad was just the one unique guy. Yeah, <laughs> that would have brought you to it the non-denominational along. church. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> got you in. That is really, really cool. Um, Brad, when you say like you listen to these podcasts, when were there specific people that God would bring in your life to bring more kind of clarity and everything? Or were you kind of like a Lone Ranger Christian for a while? I think um, I think I had some family members um, that were praying for me. Okay. But I think it was something I needed to do on my own. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I think the predominant question in my mind was what is truth? Yes. Like, and, and that's, that was my driver and that was what I was searching for. Mm-hmm. And I didn't want, I, looking back, I don't think I wanted outside influences on that. I wanted to come to my own conclusion. Mm-hmm. But I had some prayer warriors around me, my brother, his his wife, um, you know, people that were praying for me each and every day that I wasn't aware that were praying for me right. at the time. And, and they've since told me. That is so cool. I love that. Okay, so you got to know the Lord. What has God been doing, like, in the past couple of years, even since Antioch? How do you feel like, how has this family been shaping you guys or changing what's been changing? Oh, I got to go yeah, first. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I guess we were kind of joking before we were going live on this podcast mm-hmm. about my absolute um, fear of public prayer. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's great. So we were going to have you pray right now. But no. So I've, I've gotten more comfortable with that. I mean, mm-hmm. I think part of it is just, you know, being brought up in the Catholic faith, it's very much like a quiet, inward yeah. mm-hmm. uh, kind of process. And so it's very different to feel more outward and, mm-hmm. and praying out loud and um, praying in small groups. I know what's helped me is probably just about from the beginning of uh, Brad and I joining Antioch when it was just starting, so mm-hmm. it was still pretty small. I joined uh, a D group, so yes. discipleship group once yes. a week, and I've I've stuck with that. Quite frankly, it probably even surprised me that I stuck with it. Probably surprised Brad that I stuck with it, <laughs> um, just to kind of do something every single week. And I think that helped me in terms of getting comfortable with kind of the small group mm-hmm. and um, just kind of living life together. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's that. It's that idea you kind of start off with it thinking it's just this like Bible study and that's all you're going to talk about. But right. I think it really helped grow me to talk about all of those, you know, typical life struggles and have people that you're praying together mm-hmm. and that it's not just this like quick little in and out prayer. OK, let's just like pray like two minutes. Um, but, you know, to really pray together yeah. and like stop and have that moment. Um, I think it even brought. A, a kind of a new spin even to my business life. Yes, I was going to ask about um, that. I, I pray more into my business life. Mm-hmm. Um, I started over the last like year and a half where I purposely make sure I'm working out every single day and taking care of the body that I know is a total gift from God. Yeah. And I think it's taken me a long time to get to that point. But like I stop during my work day to Mm -hmm. make sure I work out and then I pray while I'm working out. So great. Um, Many times I I sing while I'm running. That's so great. So I have a horrible singing voice. No, I love not like yours. (laughs) So I just want to say that like when I am running, I'm running out in like farm fields where nobody can hear me. But I am singing out loud while I am running. That's actually really good training too. Yeah, I think it's helped cardio, but it's also been like kind of enjoyment for me to go. I know I'm a horrible singer, but I'm just going to sing out loud anyway. I'm doing it. Yeah, (laughs) I love it. I love it. So, okay. So business, you said it's affected some things there. Has it, did it? is in the past couple of years, is that the impetus to join this sex trafficking, human trafficking thing that you've been doing? I think so. I think the, the big part of it is I've stopped dropping this idea of making plans. I mean, many times I'm hired to make plans mm-hmm. and I can be good at making plans. Like and as I, a consultant. Yeah. Saying, and I yeah. can be good at making successful plans of like yeah. a five year plan to reach $10 million, you know, whatever that looks like. I think I've been slowly in the last year starting to drop this idea of me always having to build all the plans yeah, and just kind of look to God and go, his plans, there's no way his plans aren't better than mine. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, they've got to be better than mine. Yeah, And so it's kind of just putting one foot in front of the other. Um, I think the human trafficking thing has been a huge part of me just forcing myself to go, just talk about it, just learn about it, just put one foot in front of the other and God will figure it out. Like, I don't have to have a plan. Like, you really will direct your steps. Exactly. 
That's it's good. Hmm. It's good. Brad, what about you? Because I know, I know from other people's testimonies that you are really bold with your faith in your work situation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, you know, um, I think just early on, once I became a follower of Christ, um, you know, there's that point where you be, you become a believer and, and you're in. And it, you think that may be the ending point, but mm-hmm. it's really just the start. Mm-hmm. And so when I came there, um, I, I'm just naturally a person who's all in or all out. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm either eating 5,000 calories a day and doing nothing, mm-hmm. or I'm training for an Ironman and eating 2,000 calories, counting macronutrients and all that stuff. So I'm all Is that in. what you're currently doing? I'm, uh, Cause I'm I know you're very active. S- semi there. Yes. Yeah. I'm almost, I'm almost fully back. So that's great. Yeah. So, but, um, I just, I, I noticed a lot of people, sometimes we have a tendency to segregate our lives. Mm-hmm. And, hey, Sunday's church. And then. Monday we're back to work and I I don't see um I just didn't never saw that as a good way to operate so Mm -hmm. I I have one life and faith is the major component of that so I bring it into all aspects Mm -hmm. of life so I mean our meetings at work we open in prayer um we're, we're doing our best to hear from God on how to handle situations at work and just to hear words from him I mean if he's you know if the Bible's true and it is if, if it's accurate in what it says, then we should hear from him. And yeah. we should, um, you know, I was just listening to an individual the other day and he is in the mechanic industry and he said he was having a problem with a vehicle, couldn't fix it, couldn't fix it. And he said, quite honestly, I never prayed about it because I didn't think Jesus knew anything about trucks. Yeah. <laughs> and so he said, I prayed about it. Right. I mean, we usually think that like. It's the last thing we do. right? Yeah. And so, you know, and he prayed about it and God, he hears something and he goes to the truck and sure enough, it fixes the truck. My goodness. And so, you know, we've, I've tried to, I, I can't say I succeed at this, but I try to make that the first step we take instead of the last. Right. And so it's been something we've tried to do. Um, and it's just been a blessing to to, to a lot of people around us. It's interesting. I had a conversation with a girl in my office uh, just two days ago mm-hmm. who she started going to a new church and, and um, she was telling me about prophecy and mm-hmm. they talk about prophecy. And I quoted when, when Paul says, you know, prophecies for edification, exhortation, and consolation. Yes. I just read that this morning, yes. ironically. Yes. And I said that to her and she goes, I'm hearing that again. She said, my church has been talking about that. Yeah. So right when I left, I have an email from her because I, I was encouraging her really. Hey, walk more in that. Try to yeah. hear from him. Hear, yeah, hear the Lord. And uh, she said, I got to tell you something. Can I come see you? So I haven't heard what she has to say yet, but I'm looking forward to that because I'm yeah. hoping she's gotten a word from God. I love that. And I love the idea that there's no lines between secular, sacred, that like the Lord is willing to invade almost mm-hmm. as much as we'll give him leave to. Mm-hmm. And have you seen like with people that work under you or that work for you, like have you seen the effect of you walking boldly in that trickle down? You, you know, I, I, um, I hope so. Um, you know, and I'm not, I think there has been some, mm-hmm. I, uh, I know there's some people who, um, it's, it's been interesting, you know, with the relationships I built at Antioch, mm-hmm. sometimes, you just need to bring in some help. So I had an individual who he was close to coming to God, but wasn't quite there yet. So mm-hmm. I scheduled a lunch with him with Bill. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, sure enough, at lunch, he, you know, accepted Christ and, and came to the Lord. But um, we hope to have more of that. I mm-hmm. I pray that, um, you know, people who are hurting will get healed in our building. I pray mm-hmm. that marriages will be healed. I pray that mm-hmm. sicknesses will be healed. Well, we pray for all those things. So um, we're hoping for more of that. And hopefully we'll have some bigger and better reports soon. And you guys were telling me before we started the podcast that you went to a conference that Kathy, you thought was a regular business conference. And can you tell me a little bit about what that was actually? Well, yeah. And, and, and I'll, I'll let, well, Brad, you can start off in terms of how did we get connected to that conference and yeah. what it was? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, another member here, Bill Freeze, said, hey, there's a business conference out at this church in California you should go to. Mm-hmm. It's called Heaven in Business. And didn't tell you the church's name. Didn't tell me. Mm-hmm. I think he may have told me the church's name, but okay. I never it didn't. Heard of it. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah. And so he said, I think your wife should go as well. And with the respect I have for Bill, I didn't ask any questions. And I just went home, told her we signed up. We're on the plane, and she's like, what is this thing we're going to? Yeah, and, I had uh, no idea. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's how we got there. And then, yeah, you want to share a little about that? Well, and, and, and literally on that plane, I'm just going, okay, what, what's the agenda? What time do, does it start? Where mm-hmm. is it? Because I'm thinking in terms of 
what do I need to wear? Mm -hmm. Um, And like, are we networking? Are Mm -hmm. there breakout sessions we have to sign up for? I mean, just the typical business conference stuff that I that I do. Um, And he had no idea. So I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just play along. And (laughs) and but quickly into it, I I looked at I kind of look back and I go, the the first day could not have been more of a blessing, but it was with Bethel Church Uh in California, a blessing for for probably I know for both of us. But for me in particular, I was going, wow, this is almost the exact opposite of a business conference in that, yes, we're all business people, Mm -hmm. uh, many of us company owners and so forth. But they took us up to this beautiful home up in the mountains. And I am a huge fan of just all nature. I yes. just always feel so much more connected to, to God. And they just fed us wonderful food. And they said there was like no agenda. We're just to hang out, get to know each other, talk with one another. So to me, exact opposite of business conference, yes. but such a gift. And then I think it was either later that night or the next night, because I just kind of covered a few days. Um, we were supposed to be going to what they called a a, a spa evening mm-hmm. where they were going to treat us. And they used the word spa. And when Brad and I were by ourselves before we were going over to this part of the, the <laughs> conference, I looked to him. I said, you know, because it was kind of put, it was pushing me, every, you know, every step of the way. Um, I just said, I, I just please, God, do not let this be some foot washing ceremony or something to make me <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, I, I was highly uncomfortable with public pr- prayer as well. Yes. And the very first meal we had, they called on me to pray. Of all the people. Um, and yes, there was a foot washing that went on for close to about a half hour and I'm prophesizing over us. Um, it was the prophecies were these were people that literally had not even met me. Yeah. I mean, they just got brought in for this part of the event, never met me, mm-hmm. knew nothing about me, mm-hmm. and were prophesizing things that, I, I mean, probably only Brad knows anything that is about. really amazing. And it's what prophecy is. I really was just reading 1 Corinthians 14 this morning and just thinking, he says, eagerly desire that you may prophesy and how it's like to build up the church. And here you're in a, this moment where people are calling was, things out yeah, about Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing the fact that I got to a point where I could relax mm-hmm. and, and enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It was amazing that there was this, you know, young 20-some-year-old guy that was giving me a foot massage <laughs> <laughs> while my At husband was sitting next was to there. me and right. he's getting a foot massage. And I mean, I hate to say it, but horribly, the first thought in my mind was going, thank God I got a pedicure. Yeah, I would have <laughs> thought the same thing. Oh, gross. Well, right. The, you know, uh, just adding on that a little bit, um, speaking of the prophetic, if mm-hmm. you don't mind. Yes. Um, I think a lot of times we think the prophetic and we think Old Testament prophecy. Right. Condemning people, mm-hmm. calling, you know, negative things, you're doing this. And and that it wasn't that whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And that's not what New Testament prophecy is or what mm-hmm. Paul's talking about in First Corinthians 14. It's it's really it was all about lifting people up, finding right. the gold in people's dirt, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and showing us you know God has so much more for you than what you think mm-hmm. you have right now, mm-hmm. and it was just beautiful to see. And we went and experienced this in Bethel and in, in Redding, California, and it's available to all of us though. Right. And that's what I learned there. It's not, you don't have to go to a destination to see mm-hmm. these things. Mm-hmm. It's just, I watched people who were going after what right. the Bible says is available. available. To us. Right. And so that was really moving to me and um, just seeing normal people go after this and truly have faith that what God said is available. Mm-hmm. Did Kathy, I'm just curious, did anyone prophesy the whole human trafficking thing for you? Do you remember? Well, you know, one of the things that they really went into is just the fact of um, they said they were um, and and luckily we we recorded all of these things. But I think the things that stuck out to me that particular evening while they were doing the foot washing Mm -hmm. um, was that they were getting images of um, like Margaret Thatcher and these like government buildings and and you do policy. lobbying, right? So, isn't so that kind of- for me, I look back at that and they just said that, you know, you'll you'll be more of a leader and so forth. And I think some of the things that I've been able to kind of bring to the organization that I do work with mm-hmm. is just the fact that I am kind of the one person on the board that understands a little bit about like the government and policy side of things. Mm-hmm. That is a little slice of the, the fight as well. Yeah. Um, and I think just... Um, speaking up 
a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a year ago that I got blessed with having a public speaking opportunity at a conference that I've gone to for years. Um, and it's a healthcare IT conference. And I always tell people, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm an expert enough to be able to hold conversations, mm -hmm. but I'm still going to be the one that if I have a computer problem, I'm either going to complain to Brad and, right. and have a temper tantrum, <laughs> or I'm just going to hopefully restart it and everything Yeah, works. everything's fine. So to be a keynote speaker at like a conference of a couple thousand people, and I'm not an expert in any of those areas, I just thought, well, I just need to... I just need to speak about what I'm passionate about mm -hmm. and hope it connects. Mm -hmm. and, and it did. And it gave me that ability to connect with a lot more people about what I'm passionate about. And what did you talk about? So I, I literally just, I talked about um, how to take the most advantage of the week at that conference and how to connect with people in a different way. To basically not just go up to each other and say, what do you do? Mm -hmm. and let's exchange business cards. Mm -hmm. But to go for a run with each other, to mm -hmm. um, pray together, to have fun, um, to not just go out and get drunk in the evening, mm -hmm. <laughs> to literally have good conversations and think about I'm building up friendships and connections. And um, I prayed before I went on, I had to grab a cab. Mm -hmm. And I prayed before I got in that cab for there to be something really inspirational that I could speak with and lead my, my speech with because I was struggling with what am what out of the five stories I had, what am I going to lead with? Yeah. And I was extremely nervous. And the um, it was an Uber driver. The guy that picked me up, he said, I, I hope you don't mind, but you can sit in the back of my vehicle if you want. But I sometimes just feel comfortable if you sit up front so we can have conversation. And I did, and it was an older gentleman, and he just started, to, I told him immediately, I said, look, I'm really nervous, so anything you can do to help me not be nervous. So he just started talking. We were in Portland, Oregon. He started talking about all the things in Portland and um, making jokes, stupid jokes. Mm -hmm. And when we got to the convention center, he said, you know, are you relaxed? Are you doing a little bit better? And I said, no, I really appreciate it. I was very thankful. And then he reached over that like gave me this huge bear hug. Oh. Um, literally picked me up out of my seat, bear hug. Oh my goodness. And it was like all the jitters and nervousness mm -hmm. just like got squeezed out of me. Mm -hmm. And and I joked about that with him and I'm like, "Man, you really like surprised me and you just squeezed all of that right out of me." And I said, "Probably the only thing you could do more is if you like got out of the vehicle and like spun me around in a circle." <laughs> No way. And he's like, well, I can if you want to. And I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> like, that's okay. That's okay. So I led in with that story and I literally had, and I go, that was a total godsend. Mm -hmm. That particular driver, um, he, he was amazing. And we even talked a little bit about mm -hmm. God. And so I led in with that on my speech. And for that whole entire week, I literally had probably 20, 30 people every single day running up behind me, grabbing my arm and saying how much they love that story and they wow. connected with them. And so it just kind of helped me build my network. And I always look at that going, I'm a bit of a connector. So yes. I just need to keep building network, creating relationship and mm -hmm connecting them to what I'm passionate in, if it makes, if they're passionate in it, and mm -hmm. also just connecting them to others, mm -hmm. connecting them to the Lord. I love that. And that's like what the body of Christ is, or just like building bridges between people to knit each other together, which is yeah. really cool. Um, Brad, I know that you've, so you spoke about kind of this ministry is international-ish mm -hmm. as well. And Brad, I know you recently went with Andrew over to Albania and you guys were his connection right to yeah. yes yeah, yeah the, the the initial <laughs> initially brad so yeah he'll have to tell that, that do you live story. like a like do you feel like your heart is a little bit in other nations as well is this like a typical um honestly no okay it's really weird um i've i've become very good friends with a couple of ministries that do extensive travel mm -hmm. and so by my support of them and just becoming friends with them they asked me to go along and so i think last year i did six Mm -hmm. six five or six international trips and the funny thing is i hate traveling do you i yeah i hate every aspect of it i hate being away from my own bed i hate yeah. being away from the own home from her from everything here i i don't like anything about it you sound like my father-in-law you sound like bill Bill <laughs> yes. and, yeah and he's on the road a lot yeah as well. he's on the road a lot too and so you know when you get called um i i think i've said yes to some that i should have said no to mm -hmm. um 
And so I'm learning to press into God and make sure they're from him mm -hmm. before I just agree to them. But, uh, yeah, the Albania one was, was quite interesting. When I was in Belfast, Ireland last year on, a, on another trip, we were at a um, CBMC conference, Christian Business Ministry Connection. It was their international meeting. And first night there, I met a gentleman, the thick Eastern European accent, and he's from Albania. I, I didn't know where Albania was, mm -mm. you know, at that point. And I was just very interested in it, so I was asking him a lot of questions and learned a lot about their history. And he um, he says, hey, can we have lunch tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah, sure, that's no problem. So we had lunch, just he and I. And first thing out of his mouth, he's a pastor there, has a, a church, uh, about 100 people, and he says, I need help. And I'm like, okay, what do you need help with? Mm -hmm. and he just says, I don't need money. And I said, okay, wh what do you need? He said, I don't know, but will you come and help? And I'm like, Sure. And, and to rewind a little bit, I skipped maybe a, a very important part of the story. He, um, early on in our conversation, says he lived in the United States in Texas for seven years. He went to school there. And he says, where do you go to church? And I said, Ginzi, it's a small church in Indianapolis. You're never going to have heard of it. And he's like, no, no, no. What's the name? And he's very, you know, like, yeah. what is the name of the church? You're like, why are you pressing me? Yeah. Though? Okay. Like, You're not going to hear no. I said, it's yeah. called Antioch, Indianapolis. And he starts laughing. He went to Antioch College Station, and not only went the to Antioch craziest. College Station, he, um, so Albania, just a quick history, they, they're the only country ever recorded to completely abolish religion. So from 1942 to 1991, they were under a communist dictator who abolished all religions, so no churches, no synagogues, no uh, mosques, nothing, wow. and essentially made himself God over the nation. And so Genzi grew up not ever seeing a Bible or ever knowing any of that stuff. So when communism fell in 92, Mother Teresa sent nuns because she was actually born. I know. She's Albanian. Albanian. I read yes. her. But yes. Okay. And um, two of her nuns gave him a, a New Testament. And he said, "I." he's a literature student. He's a, got his PhD in American literature. So huge American reader. literature. Yeah. Huge, huge uh, reader. So he said, I devoured the book of John. And he said, I went to bed not believing in God or Jesus. And I woke up and I was a follower of Christ. Whoa. So he, he had an encounter of some sort. He, he doesn't talk about it. He said he doesn't want people to think he's special, and I respect that. Yeah. But, um, you know, we he, he became a, a Christian, moves to the United States to get his uh, master's at uh, Texas A&M, and then goes to get his Ph.D. there. And um, he said, I kind of not walked away from the Lord, but I was just living this don't really care life, yeah. you know, with God. And he said, I'm walking one day, and I see Antioch. So I said, I decided to go on a Sunday. And... Um, he said God put him there because the first day, he said during worship songs, he said he sees a sees a woman walking towards him, and he said I was just like, please don't come talk to me, please mm -hmm. don't come talk to me. <laughs> and she grabbed him, and she said, the Lord's given me some words for you. I'd like to share some she, prophetic words, prophetic as words. we've been talking about. And uh, he said it was everything he needed to hear from the Lord. And he said from that moment forward, he decided once I'm done with my schooling, I'll move back to Albania and and uh, fulfill my calling. And that's what he's doing. And that's what he's doing. And he just happened to meet you at this conference. Yeah, an American from Indianapolis meeting in Albania. <laughs> Albania at a business conference in Belfast, Ireland. Yeah, the Lord is amazing. <laughs> yes. He's a great networker, Kathy, and you're a great networker. And look, you're just like and, him. And I and I look at that and I go, and the fact that it's Albania, the right? fact that that's Mother Teresa's homeland, mm -hmm. and I grew up on Mother Teresa. Yes, you know, I didn't even think about like that. Such a, Huge fact, you know, huge personality, so to speak, oh, in the sure. Catholic Church. And I just remember always reading books about her yeah. and everything. So that, very, yeah, very interesting how it all crazy. comes together. And how the Lord knits it together that you just happened to be at Antioch. And, yes. And you and Andrew just went. And Andrew and I are going to make a podcast about oh, it, great. Mm -hmm. about your trip. So I don't want to give things away. Yeah. But it's amazing awesome. how you guys both, I feel like we're also doing some stuff with your your um what is what is the name of the organization it's called, uh, you can free us you can free us so yeah. we're we're doing something maybe as a church i think in yeah, the next few I months think, with you um later in august we're looking at so um and i think we're just going to try to you know pull together lots of different aspects around it because as, as i said before i i'm just such a connector that i go um as much as i'm on the board of an organization to me i just look at it it's it's just it's a fight mm -hmm. you know it's it's the fight where truly the least of these meets pure evil mm -hmm. um, in this world and it's such a huge fight but I also look at the fact that you know the that quote-unquote chance meeting right of you know Brad here in, in Belfast Ireland I just remember when he 
um, it was within weeks of him being back from that trip in Ireland that he just said, you know, I really prayed on it and I really think that, you know, we need to go to Albania. And I remember him saying, we, because normally I'm doing business travel separate, mm-hmm. he's doing business travel separate, mm-hmm. he's been doing international s- travel separate. Mm-hmm. Um, this was kind of the first time that it became more of a, a we thing and it was nice. I mean, I was, yeah. it was refreshing to kind of go, okay, we can go into this new phase where we can still be called individually to what we're supposed to do. But we right. both felt like this was something that was going to be a, a we thing and, and kind of nice to, to do that travel together. Um, and, and what was interesting is, you know, there's all these weird things where you're going, I can't believe all this is getting knitted together and mm-hmm. what are the odds? And mm-hmm. you definitely see it's a, um, you know, Lord inspired. And, um, but I look at that and I go, the more we learned about Albania, the more I learned that Albania is one of those hot spots of where women, Sex one of the number one spots in Eastern Europe that they're basically trafficking women into Western Europe. Um, and so I look at that and I go, you know, it, it's wherever I go, yes, I can kind of knit that into it. Um, and, you know, Brad's being called himself and, and where he sees that he can kind of fit in and, and help in Albania. Um, but yes, I definitely would like to reiterate, Brad does not like travel. <laughs> <laughs> so Brad will be going to Albania every week for yeah. the night. No, so kidding. this is, I mean, you know, and I do. And Albania is pretty far, right? Like, it's I, a- Yeah, I, I love travel. I, I love yeah. being on a flight and not having my phone and just wow. But I will say Albania the first time that well, he's now been twice. I've been once. We plan to go back together a couple more times this year. Um, the very first time we went to Albania, I could not have been looking more forward to it because it's been a little while since I've done international, mm-hmm. and I love those flights. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got really sick. Oh no! The whole way over. I had an incredibly difficult flight the whole way back. And the funny thing is, is I kind of looked at that and I thought, what are what are the odds that mm-hmm. the only time I've had such difficult flights, yeah. we're going to do something that we both felt very, very called to do. Yeah. And I look at that and I go, oh, that was just, I didn't recognize that was just a fight. Yeah, just opposition. Yeah, yeah. that was just the, the pushback. And we both felt it in different ways on that trip. Yeah. But it didn't feel like a deterrence it Mm -hmm. just felt like us recognizing there's a reason why there Mm -hmm. is pushback and opposition it's you know it's literally like the devil coming in and trying to fight against Mm -hmm. you and it's just another fight where you push back and go no we're just gonna go Mm -hmm. especially as both you guys are like powerful people on your own and then even more powerful if like the Lord is uniting you in purpose in this specific place. I know you're married, but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you do two different things business wise, which is so cool. Did they, when you were at that kingdom, maybe this is a personal question, but did they prophesy over you guys as a couple when you were at Bethel as well? They did. I know the first, um, like the first night they actually did bring in people that were going through their school of prophecy. Mm -hmm. And they, like, I think it was maybe, maybe 12 to 15 people. And so each one would kind of spend 10 minutes with you. And it was individual prophecy, but then also they were spending with you as a couple Mm -hmm. because everybody there was a couple, but also, you know, in the business world and business owners. Um, And so I, I do remember, I think some of it, but it it was, what was really probably fascinating for me to watch because I didn't necessarily get a prophecy at this one point. It was the last lunch we had there. They brought in fifth graders oh. to prophesize over us. And so <laughs> fifth graders, and, you know, they're all different yeah. sizes and shapes because they're, you know, some have not gone through that. Right, and some and, have, yes. You know, so they just look so little and so mm-hmm. young. And they were just brought in and just told to go up to us and prophesize if they heard a word or whatnot. And there was several that came up to Brad and were prophesizing about his business. Wow. Which at that point in time, we'd gone through some struggles with his business the previous few years. So it was wow. really encouraging and mm-hmm. also kind of interesting mm-hmm. to go, I wonder how this is going to play out mm-hmm. and how this is all going to work out. So, And since then, we've been very blessed. And I think probably because we've been listening to the Lord more. Yep. And with the blessings, we see it as a responsibility to make sure we're using it 
with what the Lord wants us to use it for. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, really interesting just to to kind of hear all of those. We, we probably need to revisit that. Yeah. It's been, it's been many years. <laughs> That is beautiful. And I feel like this whole podcast, the Holy Spirit's just been like directing it. But the encouragement, first of all, to not make sacred, sacred and secular, secular, mm-hmm. but to merge the two and how you guys are doing that and how like the, the the aspect of encouragement that the Holy Spirit is an encourager. So when we were praying for someone and he gives us an encouragement for someone to like share it and then just believing that he's networking people together, like mm-hmm. everywhere we go is not in mm-hmm. vain, you know, like there's mm-hmm. a divine appointment and... I am personally excited to see what the Lord is going to do on both of y'all and even in how you're bringing our church. I'm thankful that you're inviting our church into the things that you guys are doing because it's awesome, guys. It's so great. So thank you for sharing with us today. Oh, you're welcome. It's been so yeah, great. This is fun. Good. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say, since Kathy, you don't really like public prayers, I'm going to see Brad, do you feel comfortable closing us in prayer? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. absolutely. You can just pray for everybody that people who really needed this, people who are in business or whatever, that we all would just be an, an activated church, you know? Yeah. So, yes. Yeah. Be great. Lord, we uh, just thank you for, for this time to, to just talk about you and with you, Lord. And we just thank you for all the blessings you've bestowed upon us, Lord. And um, we just pray, Lord, for the church, the church members, Lord. We pray for uh, just your your word to be released over them, Lord, that everyone mm-hmm. will hear from you, Lord, and accept the words they hear and just walk in them, Lord, and just uh, truly experience your joy and your goodness, Lord. And um, just help us to see you, to know you, Lord, and help us to go from here and just bless the city and the state, Lord, in Jesus' mm-hmm. name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you next week with Andrew talking about Albania. Thanks so much for listening with us today. If you would like any further information or resources, you can visit AntiochIndy.com or find us on Instagram at AntiochIndy.